Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 218. O life that maketh all things new, the blooming earth, the thoughts of men, our pilgrim feet wet with thy dew, in gladness hither turn again. Hymn number 218. Scriptural will be given by Shahidat from Maryland. I will read Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength in very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the high tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He make it worse to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot, chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God, of, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Stella. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, Father who is in heaven. heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 188. No eye hath seen, nor tongue declared, nor hath it entered heart of man to know what God hath here prepared for them that love and trust his plan. Hymn number 188.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it or if you want to listen to it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you will also be able to find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that children anywhere in the world can attend by telephone. And in fact, many of our Sunday school students do attend by a telephone. So if you don't live in the area and if you have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number and we'd be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers, so you can bring the whole family. Uh, we have been printing and mailing this uh, week. The February full-text lesson sermon booklet was printed and mailed and should be arriving to subscribers any day now if you haven't received it already. Yesterday, we had a really good Bible study session, uh, the first of several on the book of Revelation. So we got a resounding start yesterday morning, and the next Bible study session will be in early or middle February. So check the website for the date and the questions, and uh, we'll look forward to another really inspired Bible study session in February. Uh, this week, we are going to have our annual meeting of the members, and it will take place this Thursday at 8 p.m., and it will be conducted over the church teleconference number so that if, the, for those of you who are members and don't live close enough to attend in person, uh, you can attend uh, via the teleconference number. And that will take place at 8 p.m. Uh, and as a result of that, we will not be holding the 9 o'clock watch message. The watch, the regular Thursday evening watch, will be held at 10 o'clock only this coming Thursday. And there's a really good article that's featured on our website that everybody needs to read. It's entitled, Ageless Being, by Bicknell Young. And you don't have to be in your 70s to, to read this. You should, <laughs> everybody should read this because uh, the belief in age starts very young these days. And this is an excellent article that everybody needs to read. Ageless Being by Bicknell Young. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from our own Plainfield Christian Science Church magazine, which attests to the healing power of Christian science. And that reading will be given this morning by Lil from New Jersey. Several years ago, I was diagnosed as having cancer of the pelvis. My mother had passed on with the same disease. I had two years of treatment from a Boston practitioner. My husband said we could no longer afford the exorbitant fees and was growing rapidly worse. A friend gave me the name of a practitioner from the Plainfield Church, and I called her in desperation and great fear. 
she gave me a statement from Science and Health, quote, the power of Christian science and divine love is omnipotent. It is indeed adequate to unclasp the hold and to destroy disease, sin, and death, end quote. After the first call, I had hope. I called the practitioner daily and was given comforting statements from the Bible and science and health to work with. One by one, the symptoms abated and disappeared until there was no more pain, bleeding, or swelling. After four months, I was completely healed, and the healing has been permanent. At the same time, I was healed of a dropped bladder and have been free to pursue the most strenuous activities. I am a new person, and I thank God, Mary Baker Eddy, and the faithful, persistent practitioner for this healing. BP. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page six of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, life. The golden text is from Matthew. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The responsive reading is from James and Ephesians. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Fairly from Maryland will now read. The Holy Bible. Proverbs. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Psalm. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Isaiah. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet 
the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. Act. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass on those days that she was sick and died. And when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called, in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Philippians. 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Second Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Revelation. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Romans. And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Life is God, and man is the idea of God. In science, man is the offspring of spirit. The beautiful, good, and pure constitute his ancestry. His origin is not like that of mortals in brute instinct, nor does he pass through material conditions prior to reaching intelligence. Spirit is his primitive and ultimate source of being. God is his Father, and life is the law of his being. The scientific unity which exists between God and man must be wrought out in life practice, and God's will must be universally done. The days of our pilgrimage will multiply instead of diminish, when God's kingdom comes on earth, for the true way leads to life instead of to death, and earthly experience discloses the finity of error and the infinite capacities of truth, in which God gives man dominion over all the earth. The substance, life, intelligence, truth, and love, which constitute deity, are reflected by his creation. And when we subordinate the false testimony of the corporeal senses to the facts of science, we shall see this true likeness and reflection everywhere. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence. Truth in truthfulness. God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Life is deathless. Life is the origin and ultimate of man never attainable through death, 
but gained by walking in the pathway of truth, both before and after that which is called death. There is more Christianity in seeing and hearing spiritually than materially. There is more science in the perpetual exercise of the mind faculties than in their loss. Lost they cannot be, while mind remains. The apprehension of this gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf centuries ago, and it will repeat the wonder. The pallid invalid whom you declare to be wasting away with consumption of the blood should be told that blood never gave life and can never take it away, that life is spirit, and that there is more life and immortality in one good motive and act than in all the blood which ever flowed through mortal veins and simulated a corporeal sense of life. Error of thought is reflected in error of action. The continual contemplation of existence as material and corporeal, as beginning and ending, and with birth, decay, and dissolution as its component stages, hides the true and spiritual life and causes our standard to trail in the dust. If life has any starting point whatsoever, then the great I am is a myth. If life is God, as the scriptures imply, then life is not embryonic. It is infinite. An egg is an impossible enclosure for deity. Science reveals the possibility of achieving all good and sets mortals at work to discover what God has already done. But distrust of one's ability to gain the goodness desired and to bring out better and higher results often hampers the trial of one's wings and ensures failure at the outset. Mortals must change their ideals in order to improve their models. A sick body is evolved from sick thoughts. Sickness, disease, and death proceed from fear. Sensualism evolves bad physical and moral conditions. Selfishness and sensualism are educated in mortal mind by the thoughts ever recurring to one's self, by conversation about the body, and by the expectation of perpetual pleasure or pain from it. And this education is at the expense of spiritual growth. If we array thought in mortal vestures, it must lose its immortal nature. If we look to the body for pleasure, we find pain. For life, we find death. For truth, we find error. For spirit, we find its opposite, matter. Now reverse this action. Look away from the body into truth and love, the principle of all happiness, harmony, and immortality. Hold thought steadfastly to the enduring, the good and the true, and you will bring these into your experience proportionably to their occupancy of your thoughts. Truth demonstrated is eternal life. 
Mortal man can never rise from the temporal debris of error, belief in sin, sickness, and death, until he learns that God is the only life. The belief that life and sensation are in the body should be overcome by the understanding of what constitutes man as the image of God. Unless the harmony and immortality of man are becoming more apparent, we are not gaining the true idea of God, and the body will reflect what governs it, whether it be truth or error, understanding or belief, spirit or matter. Therefore, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Be watchful, sober, and vigilant. The way is straight and narrow, which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death, either here or hereafter, certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God. Let us accept science, relinquish all theories based on sense testimony, give up imperfect models and elusive ideals. And so let us have one God, one mind, and that one perfect, producing his own models of excellence. Let the male and female of God's creating appear. Let us feel the divine energy of spirit, bringing us into newness of life and recognizing no mortal nor material power as able to destroy. Let us rejoice that we are subject to the divine powers that be. Such is the true science of being. Any other theory of life or God is delusive and mythological. We all must learn that life is God. Ask yourself, am I living the life that approaches the supreme good? Am I demonstrating the healing power of truth and love? If so, then the way will grow brighter unto the perfect day. Your fruits will prove what the understanding of God brings to man. Hold perpetually this thought, that it is the spiritual idea, the Holy Ghost and Christ, which enables you to demonstrate with scientific certainty the rule of healing, based upon its divine principle love, underlying, overlying, and encompassing all true being. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 207. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O gentle presence, peace and joy and power, O life divine that owns each waiting hour, Thou love that guards the nestling's faltering flight, Keep thou, my child, on upward wing tonight. Hymn number 207.
was always one of those who had to find herself what I wanted, who I was supposed to be. I've read all those self-help books on the self-improvement shelf. Some were good, but still I felt so empty. Couldn't tell you what it was that I was looking for. I could dissect it all and get back to you later. But I needed each experience to bring me to my knees before the feet of my creator. Then the most amazing thing happened. I forgot myself in him. And one day, while I was walking, Suddenly, when I found God, I found me. I realized suddenly I was who I was supposed to be when I found God. I found me. Yes, the world has exciting adventures and beautiful things to offer you. If you want them, you can get them. But once you've had your fill, and you will, you will, all you want is the truth. All you want is the truth. And the most amazing thing happened. You'll forget yourself in him. And one day. You'll realize suddenly you are who you are supposed to be and you will see why when I found God I found me We could end on that, but we're not going to. Let's now sing hymn number 59. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength, and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life, and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally. Thy joy and crown eternally. Hymn number 59.
read from the Christian Science textbook, the Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind, and it's infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them. Let love him. Amen. <laughs> 